Following the 9-11 attacks, many Americans were left dazed and confused. Many loved ones of mine told me they didn't know where the world was heading. There was a feeling of shock among the nation. On October 26th, the United States Congress posted their response, Patriot Act. The ACLU describes Patriot Act as an overnight revision of the nation's surveillance laws that vastly expanded government's authority to spy on its own citizens. This expansion of government power was, at the time, seen as a necessary provision by Congress to stop terrorism on U.S. soil. It's important to ask, what did Patriot Act and other national surveillance laws have? We should question the effectiveness along with the moral implications of having a government that is allowed to spy on its citizens. Obama once said while on a trip to Berlin, We know of at least 50 threats that have been averted because of this information, not just in the United States, but in some cases threats here in Germany. Without a doubt, this is an impressive feat if true. A potential of tens of thousands of lives saved. However, in January 2014, around seven months after Obama's claim, the New America Foundation published a report on the effectiveness of NSA surveillance. Using a sample of 225 individuals recruited by Al-Qaeda, they said that Section 215 of Patriot Act, the law that authorizes government officials to see telephone records, only showed an identifiable role in 1.8% of cases. Furthermore, Section 702 of FISA, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, an act passed in 2008, allows for warrantless wiretapping of foreigners, showed an identifiable role in 4.4% of cases of terrorism. There were a few findings. A. Traditional investigative methods initiated the majority of terrorism cases. Traditional being informants, tips from local communities, and targeted investigative methods. B. Surveillance of American phone metadata has had no discernible impact on preventing acts of terrorism and only the most marginal of impacts on preventing terrorist-related activity, such as fundraising for a terrorist group. C. In three of the key terrorism cases, it has cited to defend NSA bulk surveillance programs. The government has exaggerated the role of the NSA in two of them and the significance of the threat posed in the third case. The government's defense has demonstrated a lack of precision regarding the exact nature of threats in the terrorism cases the government has claimed were prevented by NSA surveillance. Senator Lee asked General Alexander, would you agree that 54 cases that keep getting cited by the administration were not all plots? And of the 54, only 13 had some nexus to the United States. And General Alexander's reply was a simple yes. 44 on this key point, beyond his one word answer. The NSA director did not elaborate while under oath. This off-sided 54 number really refers to terrorist activities such as fundraising, plots that were only national, or actual averted attacks. There are more findings on the report, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that the effectiveness of surveillance is highly contested. If there is any impact on terrorism by Patriot Act and other laws, it is worth mentioning. Terrorism is a moral evil, and any way of lessening it is good. What is not beneficial is the intrusions of privacy, which Patriot Act and other laws may be encouraging. In 2013, The Guardian reported that the United States government was collecting phone data, indiscriminately and in bulk. Days later, The Guardian reported again that the government was tapping into Google, Facebook, and Apple, along with other internet companies, to collect data on citizens. These articles posted by The Guardian and soon other publications would be the start of a phenomenon called the Snowden Effect coined after the man who leaked dozens of NSA National Security Agency documents, Edward Snowden. The Snowden effect has led to conversations of if it was okay to have a government spy on their citizens, indiscriminately at that. A phrase often attributed to the Nazis, but in this case, I could only find it in a book written by Upton Sinclair in 1917 called The Prophets of Religion, is, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. This quote often represents the viewpoint of many people who may be apathetic or even supportive of government surveillance. Edward Snowden, the same guy we talked about who leaked the NSA documents, made an impassioned reboot. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. If you aren't doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about. What would you say to someone who said that? Privacy is what gives you the ability to share with the world who you are on your own terms, for them to understand uh, what you're trying to be and to protect 
for yourself, the parts of you that you're not sure about, that you're still experimenting with. Uh, if we don't have privacy, what we're losing is the ability to make mistakes. We're losing the ability to be ourselves. For many, the issue of surveillance is not one of having something to hide, but is one of privacy. To be able to feel yourself by yourself. There's nothing wrong with thinking if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. But it's important to keep the viewpoint in mind and to think of the implications of having a surveillance state. Terrorism is a horrible thing. It has led to the deaths of many people throughout the passage of time. There is no doubt that Patriot Act, along with other acts, have had some impact on terrorism, no matter how minor it may be. What is undeniable is the effect that surveillance has on our day-to-day -day lives, leading to a decrease of privacy and trust with the government. If you had the executive decision, would you rather live in a world with or without surveillance? On one hand, there is potential for some life to be saved. On the other, there are complete and utter breaches in privacy.